Hi, good morning. There's this theory about you season four going around that I cannot stop thinking about. I'm literally obsessed, which is a problem and a little ironic considering. So I wanted to make this video exploring the theory, looking at the evidence that supports it, the evidence that opposes it, and then try to give my take on whether I believe it or not. First, an explanation of the theory. The theory goes like this. Joe is disassociating and committing the murders and then imagining receiving these texts from the real killer who he imagines to be Reese, but in reality is himself and he's never actually met Reese. I imagine that he wants to believe he's not a killer so badly that his mind has created this delusion where somebody else is doing the killing and that sets him up to do some good and redeem himself in a way by figuring out who it is and taking the killer down. In this theory, Reese is a real writer and politician that Joe became obsessed with after he read his book in the first episode, but Joe has never actually met him, and every interaction we see between the two of them is Joe imagining talking to Reese the same way he imagines talking to Candace in season one, Beck and his mom in season two, and how it looks like he'll be imagining talking to Love in part two of season four. When I first heard this theory, it changed the way I saw part one of season four. I've been thinking about it nonstop and I'm like that Charlie Day meme trying to like find and piece together every little clue or detail that could prove or disprove the theory. So let's start with the evidence that supports the theory that Joe is actually responsible for the murders and just imagining his interactions with Reese as the killer. Well, the biggest pieces of evidence backing up this theory are one, Joe is shown waking up after each of the murders, as if he's blacking out to commit the murder and then coming to afterwards. Two, we never see Reese directly interact with anybody else. Not at Sundry House, not at the art show, not at the dinner for Simon, and he's conveniently absent from the trip to the castle. And three, Reese as the killer manages to find out information about Joe's past that he wouldn't have reasonably been able to. Love and Forty make the connection between Joe and Beck after reading Default, but that only happened because Candace introduced Forty to the book. There's no way that Reese would have been able to link Joe to Beck or Peach's deaths, and probably not Henderson's either. Watching the show again with the theory in mind, there are quite a few more clues that I noticed. The most obvious one is Nadia giving Joe Reese's book in the first episode. This could have been when Joe reads the book and becomes so fixated on Reese that he starts developing the Reese character in his head. Considering this theory, Joe never met the real Reese. It is possible that the real Reese is giving a speech at Simon's funeral because we don't see Joe and Reese interact at that point. So anytime we do see them interact, it would seem that Reese isn't actually there and the interaction is just in Joe's head. Like at the dinner for Simon, Reese asks Joe if he's alright, but Adam doesn't get mad about someone talking until Joe responds to Reese. At first, I didn't think anything of this, I thought Adam was just being an ass to Joe, but it's possible that the question from Reese was just in Joe's head, so when he answered aloud, Adam was like, what's that? Because he was talking to himself. Next, when the killer shows up to kill Simon, Simon's like, what do you want? Which makes me wonder, would he react like that to seeing Reese? Or is he more likely to have an attitude like that towards Jonathan, who he was already kind of cold to earlier in the day? Also related to the art show, Joe enters through the back door with Blue, and he's shown coming out of the kitchen, and he's passing a server that's wearing one of those jumpsuits that the killer wears to kill Simon. Joe could have spotted those jumpsuits on his way in and known where they were for later in the night. It's also pretty convenient that Joe just knows where Simon's body is after he realizes he's been killed. While Kate doesn't seem like a you so far, she could still be revealed to be one, kind of like in season two, episode one, where we find out Joe already had eyes on love when he moved into his apartment and got the job at a Novrin. And that could be the reason that Joe targets each of his victims, because they all die shortly after wronging Kate. Malcolm talks about cheating on Kate multiple times, Simon threatens Kate's career, and then Kate talks to Joe about how vile she thinks Gemma is, and then look at that, they all end up dead. And isn't it convenient that the killer wanted Joe to kill Kate, which gave him the perfect excuse to follow her under the guise of protecting her? Now for a speed round of clues. After their first meeting at Sundry House, Reese says goodbye Jonathan, even though Joe didn't introduce himself by name. The text messages disappear so there's no proof to look back on, maybe because they never existed. The first text from the killer is Joe's iconic, hello you, and as Nadia said, there are no coincidences. At the art show, Reese pops up out of nowhere next to Joe and then seemingly disappears after the paint throwing scene. Joe does have Malcolm's ring, and based on the trailer for part two, I think he might have Simon's ear. Reese says the killer manages to go completely unnoticed at the castle, even though there was security there sent by Kate's dad. Joe doesn't have a wound on his head after Reese knocks him out by hitting him with the gun, which could suggest it didn't even happen. Finally, there are a few more clues in the trailer for part two that I think could fit with this theory. First, watching this trailer with the theory in mind, 
Reese just gives off the vibe of not really being there. He's calm and comfortable in Joe's apartment, which seems weird if they're at odds with each other. The way he looks right past Joe in his stalker hat gives the impression that he doesn't even know Joe at all, which could be supported by a later scene where Joe seemingly confronts Reese at his home, only to have the door close on him because Reese doesn't know who he is, prompting him to force his way in. And finally, there's a scene with a new cage, which is really exciting for me, and it tells me that Joe is going to be doing more Joe things, including imagining love, and I really think that she could be the one that makes him face the reality that he's been doing the killing the whole time. So that's all the evidence I could think of that supports the theory of Joe imagining Reese. But what evidence is there that the theory doesn't quite add up? Well, for starters, Joe wakes up in the places you would expect him to after each of the murders. For Malcolm, sure, he could have killed him and then passed out on the couch. But for Simon, did he start to doze off on the bench, disassociate and go into killer mode, don a server's jumpsuit over his regular suit, kill Simon, dispose of the jumpsuit, do something with the ear, and then make it back to the bench just in time to hear the sirens? Or for Gemma, did he kill her and then climb back up on the hedges before coming to and hearing Kate scream? That just doesn't make sense to me. But speaking of Gemma, she mentioned Reese not coming to the castle with them, which tells me he is part of their friend group. And while they're all gathered and making fun of Simon after his death, Reese says, I need some air, and he goes to set his glass down, and Gemma looks his direction as if she's aware of his presence and he's not just part of Joe's imagination. Also at this time, when Joe follows Reese outside and they have another chat, Reese mentions wishing Simon had changed and that, along with some other stuff Reese talks about in his past and his time at college, it makes him seem like a real person. And I can't exactly see Joe imagining those conversations unless he really, really fleshed out the Reese character in his mind based on what he read in his memoir. But the biggest questions I have that make me doubt this theory are, if Joe is really the killer and just imagining Reese, one, why did he send Malcolm's finger to the police? Two, why did he post all those newsprints all over his own walls? Three, why would he chain himself up in an underground prison and then start a fire? And four, why is he all of a sudden leaving bodies behind? And in support of Reese being real and being a killer, he did have opportunity. He left the bar before Malcolm was murdered, he was at the art show, and he was conveniently absent from the trip to the castle so he could have been sneaking around. And Joe would have to create an extremely elaborate delusion. A killer that taunts him through text, breaks into his apartment to post all these newsprints on his walls, sends Malcolm's finger to the police and threatens to pin these murders on him, traps him in an underground prison, and then sets the place on fire, all while Joe actually did that to himself? That just doesn't it makes sense. Time for my verdict. What do I think about this theory? Well, I've thought about it a lot, constantly. And when I started writing this video, I wasn't convinced. But then the trailer for part two came out and watching it with the theory in mind, I do think this could be the direction they're going. I'm not 100% sure because full disclosure, I'm never 100% sure of anything. It does seem possible. If this is the direction they're taking it, I hope they can pull it off. Maybe they put all of their thought and planning into this twist and that's why they put so little effort into Joe getting his new identity. I personally do not want this theory to be true. I don't want this to be like a Fight Club Tyler Durden situation. I want Reese to be real and I want him to be a secret killer. If he is real, I do still have some questions, like how could he have found out about Joe's past in New York or know what Joe was doing all the time, but I lived through seven seasons of Pretty Little Liars, I've overlooked bigger plot holes, and I might let those questions slide unanswered if I could get serial killer Reese. And if it is true, I don't know what that says about Joe, because he spent three seasons fixating on a woman and killing anyone who got in his way, but now what? All of a sudden, he's overwhelmed by guilt and disassociating? That almost makes him seem like a victim, and while, yeah, he had a traumatic childhood, he's not a victim, he's a serial killer. And I just want him to be serial killer buddies with Reese. I don't know, I don't know where this is gonna go, I just wanna see more Reese. But what do you think about this theory? Given all that I've covered in this video, do you think that Joe is just imagining Reese and committing the murders himself, or do you believe that Reese is the real killer? I'd love to know where you land on this because I've been going back and forth on it. I still kind of am. So let me know in the comments what you think about this theory. Be sure to like and subscribe. Please and thank you. Goodbye, Joe.